You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and happy Monday or whatever day it is where you are in the world. Thank you very much for deciding to join us, get some good information, hear some great stories, maybe learn something that is thought provoking. Thank you so much and welcome to another epic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Yes, I'd like to welcome you as well. This is episode number 910. Time I say 900, it's freaky. Hard to believe. Very thankful for you guys. Thankful that you've essentially brought us to this point, which is 910 episodes. Thank you. And we thank everyone who supports us by becoming members. If you're not familiar, we went to San Diego about a month and a half ago or a month ago, and we launched our new mapping course. Well, that's going to be online here shortly, and I think it's going to take the depth of a lot of our material online to a whole new level that I don't think people have seen in our membership community yet. And I'm really looking forward to hearing your feedback because I poured my heart and soul into that. And for a while, I thought that I was going to lose the heart. So <laughs> glad it paid off. But all's well. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm really excited for that. We're also really excited for a lot of the other new content coming out um, that we're working just tirelessly here at Drone U to provide you with value and information. Um, so if you are a member, I uh, really do appreciate it. If, you, yes. if you've thought about becoming a member, this is a great time to become a member. We're actually going to remove the dollar trial because so many people are trying it out. It's uh, It's been doing really well. We're gonna be removing that soon. So if you wanna check out behind the scenes, uh, I would do so now. Uh, otherwise it will be gone soon. Hi hey guys, just had a question uh, regarding the low altitude authorization and notification capability system. I like using that system at my job. I work for a city and in our city, we've got a couple of uh, radio towers. One of them is about 700 feet. Uh, my question is, if I am approved to fly in this area, which happens to be Class B airspace from the ground up, can I, under Part 107, still fly an additional 400 feet above that tower? when I'm using the uh, LAANC system. Thanks, guys. Keep up the great work and really enjoy your shows. Thank you, Todd. Appreciate the question very, very much. Thank you for listening. And if you guys have a question like Todd did, go to askdroneu.com. We'd love to hear from you as well. Um, so he's he's wanting to get quite a ways up there in the sky. And, and whether it's Lance or any other process, I, I'm guessing that's not going to be okay. Uh, I am guessing that it probably would not be okay as well uh, because we have reached out to Mr. Kevin Morris to get an answer on this, uh, this question. So if you are in Class G airspace for any reason, um, I'm gonna, so I'm not going to talk about controlled airspace just yet. If you're in Class G as in golf airspace and you're flying a tower, you know that if it's a tower or a building, you can fly up to 400 feet or 400 feet above the tallest point of the building with a 400 foot radius of said building. Now, that being said, if you're in controlled airspace, or no, let's take a step back. If you're in G airspace, but you're underneath the shelf of an airport, so let's use Albuquerque as the example. If I wanted to fly a radio tower down by KOB um, TV, which is down there off of like 12th and Central, in that particular area, I might actually be below the shelf, but if I were to fly to 400 feet above the tallest building, I would definitely be in controlled airspace, which means that you cannot breach controlled airspace. So if you have a low altitude authorization notification capability, dumbest, dumbest acronym ever. Anyway, if, if you have the authorization to fly in a particular area, let's say it's 200 feet, 300 feet, or 400 feet, the low altitude authorization does not give you specific clearance or access into the airspace above that. If you are flying a tower, you should be very specific about that tower. Um, now, is this something that's going to get you in a heap of trouble and you're going to be liable for and blah, blah, blah? Probably not unless you do something stupid. But the chances of you getting in trouble are probably very low. 
But again, if you're filing for Link, you should definitely put in there that you're you're flying a tower and you need to fly 200 feet above the tower. I would say 200 feet above the tower. I would not say 1,200 feet. Like, because right. <laughs> you know how these people, the, we're all human, okay? I don't, yeah. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's a government person or a, a private enterprise person or a police officer. We're all human. And when you're scoring through lots of documents, chances are you start skimming stuff, right? You read like the only like three words or five words or every three words. Um, if someone puts in there they want 1,200 feet, it's probably just going to red flag to the point where they're like put it in a separate pile. And that's what you don't want. Right. So when I'm like, say that you want to go 200 feet above the tower, write in 200 feet and then above the tower. Because chances are, if they are skimming over it, you're going to get the clearance right there. That's good And they point, may yeah. not even read it. Now, um, is the assumption that the, the flight is being done to capture the tower? Typically, is, that is the idea. Because yeah, I didn't yeah. necessarily get that from Todd's question. On but. cell phone towers specifically, um, and I mean, like, you know, there's going to be a lot of tower inspections on the West Coast coming up soon. But um, on these towers, on these cell phone towers specifically, they also want to do what's called a centerline inspection, which is just verifying the safety of the center line that, um, you know, people climb up these towers. They need to have that safety line, and the safety line is tied to the very top of the tower. Um, so in order to, you know, make sure that it's safe to go up the tower, they typically do an inspection. So sure. I'm guessing that that is, that is what he's going for. In which case, I don't why would you need to be 400 feet above the tower? Yeah, that's a very good question. That's a very, very, very good question. It doesn't so. seem like you'd be doing anything worthwhile up that high. But yeah, he didn't go into what those details are, so maybe there is something worthwhile up there. Yeah, that's a good question. Don't know. No, I don't know either. All right. So basically that's uh, it in a nutshell. Is It's all how you put in the, the request essentially is yeah. going to give you the best option or the best, the best bet for making that happen if that's your desired goal. Yes. For whatever reason. You have that goal. Yeah, long and the short of it is if you you can go 400 feet above a tower or a building within a radius of 400 feet, but you cannot breach controlled airspace to do so. That is, they should make that more clear, but they don't really make it very clear. Yeah. yeah. But that is the long and the short of it. So hmm. um, pretty easy, pretty simple podcast today. All right. Um, but I think it's something that a lot of people are going to be running into and uh, yeah, it's just one of those things that you should be cognizant of. And don't forget, if you have a question, whether you believe it's stupid or not, it's not. You should probably ask that question on askdroneu.com. Please don't send me Facebook messages. I'm not going to respond to them. Um, I just can't. It's a matter of time. I have got priorities here. And in order to constantly deliver relevant information that's very deep, I can't do that all the time. So anyway, just wanted to make that clear. Um, so please ask Fair your enough. questions at askdroneu.com. Good example. What does the mapping workflow really entail? Um, should I really get a expensive GPS unit and the new expensive Phantom 4 RTK to do survey grade mapping? Um, what are the main differences between the Phantom 4 RTK and the Phantom 4? I don't know. Those things could really help uh, get great questions out there. Keep the questions coming. That's what matters. So anyway, that is going to do it for us today. Thank you for joining us. No, really, thank you for joining us. And if you leave us a review, I am reading them. So thank you for all the reviews. Really do appreciate it. Up to 246 reviews on iTunes. If you could leave us a review or share the show with someone, that way you help expand the industry and the knowledge therein so we can retain the freedoms to fly. Thank you very much for listening. Mm. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Hey.